What is up my comic comrades? As always, everyone here at Planet Variant hopes you guys are staying safe and healthy. Now a couple of weeks ago, I took to my personal Twitter account to ask you guys what kind of history of episodes you'd want to see here on the channel. And by far, the most requested character was the question, which I actually thought was a bit shocking. Don't get me wrong, I like the question as much as the next guy. He's actually one of my favorite characters from the Justice League Unlimited cartoon series. I just didn't think he was going to be requested as much as he was. Either way, I'm super excited so many of you requested an episode on him because now I got to talk about him. But before we get into today's episode, we want to thank our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. We've told you guys many times, we are fans of the mobile game Raid Shadow Legends over here on Planet Variant. It's a great fantasy RPG that's free to play and has a crap ton of great features. You've got the PvP battle arena, the story-driven campaign battles, or you can just spend time raiding the dungeons for treasures and artifacts. Once you've won your artifacts, you could also head over to the tavern to upgrade or ascend your champions and make them even more powerful. If that's not enough, you can compete against the entire raid community while battling the Spider's Den, Ice Golem's Peak, the Fire Knight, or the Awesome Dragon's Lair in one of the ongoing local and global tournaments in order to win even more rewards and rare artifacts. And in this month's patch 1.15 update, you'll soon be able to compete in the brand new arena tournament. Ultimately, that's what's so great about Raid. It has such a variety of game features that it allows you to play either on the go when you just have a couple of minutes, or you could really dig in when you're looking to get more immersed. It's also available on your PC now as well, so you could sync up with your mobile version. Click one of the links in the description below to download the game, and all new players will receive 100,000 silver, 50 bonus gems, one energy refill, and a rare high elves champion, Adjudicator, which is a dope champion to start off with. Remember, new players will only get these bonuses through our link, and once you're set up, you'll have them waiting for you in your inbox, which you can find here for the next 30 days. So good luck, and we hope to see you there. But now, my comic comrades, you know exactly what time it is. It's time to break down the history of Vic Sage, aka The Question. Vic Sage, aka The Question, first appeared in Blue Beetle issue 1 in June of 1967 and he was created by the one and only Steve Ditko. Ditko originally created the question for Charlton Comics, but he was later acquired by DC Comics in the early 1980s with several other Charlton characters, such as Blue Beetle and Captain Atom. The question first appeared in the DC Universe in 1985's Crisis on Infinite Earths, issue 6. In fact, this was the introduction of several Charlton characters to the DC Universe, such as Blue Beetle, Captain Atom, Nightshade, Peacemaker, Judo Master, and Thunderbolt. As for the question, he was later revamped for the DC Universe by the great Dennis O'Neill and Denny's Cohen in 1987. Decades later in 2014, the question was significantly rebooted for the new 52 in the title, The New Suicide Squad, but I'll touch more on that in a bit. Now it's time to talk about the character's fictional origin. As I briefly told you guys, the question was originally created to be a Charlton Comics character and the character heavily reflected its creator Steve Ditko's objectivist views. Funny enough, this was similar to another one of Ditko's creations, Mr. A. Nonetheless, the question didn't have much backstory while at Charlton Comics. But what we did know is he was ruthless with criminals, much like Rorschach. Which makes all the sense in the world considering Alan Moore based Rorschach off the question. That's right, without the creation of the question, there would be no Rorschach, at least not the way we know him now. In any case, once Question was acquired by DC, he made several small appearances here and there. But once 1987 rolled around, the character was given his own title series, written by Dennis O'Neill and drawn by Dennis Cohen, which I just mentioned a bit ago. In this new series, we would get the classic DC origin of the question. With his new expanded backstory, we find out that Vic Sage's full name is Charles Victor Zask, not to be confused with the Batman villain. We find out he was an orphan who was raised in a Hub City orphanage. As a child, he was a troublemaker, and because of this, he was often beaten by the nuns who ran the orphanage. When he was old enough, he left the orphanage and went to college to study journalism. After this, he would become a reporter, but he still wasn't happy with his life and definitely had trouble controlling his violent tendencies. Ultimately, he would meet Aristotle Rodor. Aristotle would help him manage his anger with a new persona. Of course, I'm talking about The Question. In DC's version of The Question, he did stay philosophical, but they did do away with the objectivism side Ditko infused in the character. Instead, Sage became a more zen-like character, which I personally think is for the better. But now that you know about his origin, let's talk about story arcs and publication history. In the question's first issue of his first solo series, we see him go up against the one and only Lady Shiva. And let's just say he doesn't do so well getting the crap kicked out of him by Shiva and her henchmen, which ultimately leads to him being knocked out by her men and then being thrown into the river to drown. Oddly enough, Lady Shiva would rescue him for personal reasons and then points at him in the direction of the wheelchair-bound Richard Dragon as soon as he recovered from her attacks. But while Sage was recovering, he was dreaming of fighting side by side with Batman because quite frankly, even heroes in the DC universe think Batman is awesome. But wait, it gets better. A little while later, while Sage is still recovering, he wakes up in a dark room to find Batman standing by his bed. 
Batman says, that night in Gotham City, the pier, the random theft, you wore a mask. Sage replies, I didn't dream. And then Batman proceeds to say the most Batman speech ever, saying you're a fool, an arrogant, incompetent delinquent. The only reason you're breathing is that you're obscenely lucky. You blunder into danger with no training, no plan. No purpose except to feed your ego and give yourself a few macho thrills. Sage replies, no, wait a minute, and Batman yells at him saying, shut up. Don't you realize how valuable your life is? How valuable any life is? How dare you risk it? You were getting kicks pretending to fight corruption when you felt like it, when you were bored, when your career needed a little boost. You can't half do what you're doing. It's got to be full time, your need, your obsession, the engine that drives you. It's got to be who you are. God, I love Dennis O'Neill Batman dialogue. It is so good. Anyway, Sage answers Batman by saying, look, there may be some truth in what you're saying, but as he's saying this, he realizes that Batman is already gone. But long story short, once Sage has recovered enough, he takes the directions that Lady Shiva gave him to go to Richard Dragon. If you guys don't know, Richard Dragon is by far one of the best martial artists in the entire DC Universe. We actually did an episode on the best fighters in the DC Universe right here. Anyway, when he makes his way to Richard Dragon, he is then trained in both martial arts and Eastern philosophy, becoming a better version of himself and definitely a better fighter. After the training, he returned to Hub City to continue his superhero career where he would fight crime while making various philosophical points. And all that takes place in the first few issues of his solo series, which lasted 36 issues, got two annuals, and a one-shot. It's my personal favorite series for the question. Denny O'Neill does such a great job with the writing and the pencils from Cohen. They're just so classic and have a nice detective feel. But moving on, we would get another question series in 2005, a six issue miniseries to be exact. It was written by Rick Veitch. This was another good series and I really enjoyed the artwork as it's abstract and I thought it fit great for what they were doing with the character. Also, this series kind of reimagines the question yet again as a self-taught urban shaman, so to speak. But of course, he's still violent and even lethal towards his enemies but it comes from a warrior background rather than his objectivist philosophy of the Charlton comic days. But the coolest thing about this miniseries hands down is that the question uses his skills to deduce and even foil a plot set by Lex Luthor to not only kill Superman, but also prevent Superman from coming back to life, which as we know, Superman previously did after being killed by Doomsday. It's just a really cool story and you get to see the question team up with Superman. Also, I love how Superman is drawn in the likeness of Christopher Reeves in this miniseries. Now at this point in the episode, you guys may be saying Vic Sage is awesome and he is the main question, but Renee Montoya also became the question and you're 100% correct. She became the question in the 52 series. In short, Sage recruits and trains ex-police officer Renee Montoya to be his replacement because he's dying from lung cancer. I actually enjoyed her time as the question and liked her obsession with the crime bible and its religion. That's right, there's something called the crime bible that exists in DC, which is a book that deals with the exploits of Cain and his works of evil in the world. And allegedly the cover of this bible is made of the stone that Cain physically used to kill his brother Abel. Talk about crazy, but yes, I did like Montoya's time as the question. Plus, she just looked really cool in the outfit. Moving along, in the Blackest Night storyline, Vic Sage was reanimated as a Black Lantern. Now reanimated, he decided to go after Renee, Aristotle, who's his Alfred of sorts, and Lady Shiva. But they were able to elude him, and by the end of Blackest Night, Sage's body was reburied by Montoya and Saint Walker of the Blue Lantern Corps. Then in 2011, DC's New 52 gave us not one, but two questions at the same time. Confusing, I know, but like I always say, comic books. The first version we were introduced to was in the New 52 Free Comic Book Day comic. Here we no longer know his true identity, but we see he was teleported to the Rock of Eternity, along with Pandora and Phantom Stranger, to stand trial for their crimes against humanity. It's here we see him punished by the wizards, erasing his face, making him blind and mute, while one wizard says, you will forget your name as well as everyone. You will forever question your identity and forever search for answers you will never find. As they banish him away to spend the rest of his life tormented by his disfigurement and not knowing who he is. That's all kinds of twisted and body horror messed up. We would later see this version of the question pop up in the Trinity of Sin storyline, where he's trying to find out who the heck he really is. We also see that somehow he got his ability to see and speak once again. We would then be introduced to a second question in the new Suicide Squad title. Evidently, this question has no ties to the previous one. Instead, we learn that this Vic Sage is a government agent recruited from a private sector to co-run the Suicide Squad with Amanda Waller. He's also responsible for the squad's new lineup in this book. In order to improve the group, he got rid of Harley Quinn and Deadshot and replaced them with Joker's daughter and Deathstroke. But on that note, it's time to move on to powers and abilities. The question, much like Batman, Green Arrow, and characters of that nature, doesn't have any superpowers. 
With that said, he's extremely skilled and talented, even without superpowers. He's a skilled martial artist being trained by Richard Dragon, and he's one of the best detectives in all of DC. He also has a genius level intellect and is a master of intimidation and interrogation of criminals. Now, not necessarily a power or ability, but rather a piece of equipment, we have his mask. A lot of people may wonder how his mask works as it seemingly makes his face completely disappear, getting rid of his nose, mouth, and eyes, kind of like the blank from Dick Tracy. The Questions mask is made of pseudoderm, which was created by the Questions mentor and Alfred of sorts, Aristotle Rodor, or as Sage calls him, Top. Pseudoderm is a clay-like substance that was originally created to imitate skin and act as an invisible bandage, but it was found toxic to open wounds, so there went that. Tot would ultimately give Pseudoderm to the Question to use as a mask, which would perfectly hide his features to make it seem as though he had no face. Sage can see and breathe easily through it. When it's not in use, it's balled up and stored in his belt buckle, which he can easily take out and put on his face whenever he wants. A special chemical applied to his face combined with a gas released from his belt makes the mask stick to his face. The gas also changes his hair color and the appearance of his clothing. What's also crazy is the mask can't be taken off by hand or any conventional means. The only way to get it off is with a second spray of gas that makes it come off. With that said, it has been shown to fall off in extreme conditions or if certain chemicals get on it. But now it's time for reading recommendations. As for reading recommendations, it's actually pretty simple. Check out his entire 1985 solo series, his 2005 miniseries, and the question, The Deaths of Vic Sage. And though not a reading recommendation, check out the Justice League Unlimited episode, Fearful Symmetry. It's very question-centric. That should be enough to get you guys started. And just like that, my comic comrades, that unfortunately brings today's episode to a close. But like I always ask you guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, please like and comment. It all helps us out. But I'll see you guys next time when I talk about all things comics. <laughs>